the applications, fixed prosthetics, uh, removable implants, uh, TMJ, doing occlusal equilibration, obviously. Uh, disclusion time reduction, you know, you, you'll see guys give those pictures at, at the lectures that show the cuspid touching the cuspid. They go, look, we have cuspid arise. Well, that doesn't mean anything. What happens between the time the two cuspids are touching and, and maximum intercuspation, that's what really matters. And that's where you'll have a patient that has some TMJ issues. You go in and check them with a T-scan, you, you equilibrate them, and all of a sudden, bingo, their jaws feel fantastic. So. Uh, Ab fraction management, no question. Uh, you know, orthodontics, locating painful teeth. Uh, dental case finishing is absolutely huge, and it's something that we just absolutely have to do. How can we be productive with a T-scan? Well, we can charge a fee for equilibration. That's anywhere from $75 to $800. And, you know, I probably undercharge more for this tool than anything else. Uh, I, I can tell you I probably have done two $800 equilibrations, but 90% of mine are $75 equilibrations where I'm going in and just kind of shoring up their bite, and, and they can tell the difference. Um, but checking all my restorative cases to help prevent remakes, that to me uh, is the most important thing that, uh, that I use the T-scan for. It's the one thing also that, uh, you know, when we're, when we're working uh, on patients and that patient comes back, they are – the bite stays more consistent, uh, their, their occlusion stays more stable, and uh, they feel better as far as the way that their teeth, you know, teeth are hitting. So let's, let's take a look at how do we, you know, how do we do that. How do you figure the cost of a remake? And to me, that is probably the most critical thing. I mean, what's it cost me? I mean, I remake stuff. If it's five years or less, what I call, uh, you know, within that time frame, if they've been following the risk factors, which we teach at Productive Dentists, um, you know, if they, if they have a high functional risk, if they're wearing their occlusal guard, if they, you know, are coming in for their perio treatments, if they're doing those things and they have a problem, then uh, we'll remake their work within a five-year period at no charge. Um, but, but how do you figure it out? Well, what's the total production of the doctor? How long is it going to take to fix it? What will the lab cost be plus parts cost? And what's your overall overhead? And... Those are things that you really need to look at to figure out, is it worth having this technology? Total production per hour of the doctor. Let's look at 800 an hour. You know, this is remaking a single veneer, you know, a single veneer uh, with a doctor doing 800 an hour. Now, I want to tell you that the average doctor in the United States is doing about um, 425 an hour. Uh, the average dentist that's coming to PDA is probably doing maybe 500, five and a quarter. I've, over the last uh, three years, uh, well, actually five years ago, I was averaging 12.50 an hour, and uh, this past year in 2008, I was producing $2,380 an hour. So I'm using 800 an hour as a intermediate. I also want to say at 23.80 an hour, I'm doing general dentistry. I'm, uh, you know, I would love to say I do implants all day long. Uh, it's about 11% of my practice. I'd love to say I did veneers all day long. You know, cosmetic dentistry is probably 18 to 20 percent of my practice. I do a lot of bread and butter dentistry, uh, and what we talk about at PDA is there's no real silver bullet. How do you become more productive? It's the little individual things that you do. But one of the big things in becoming more productive is not having to remake things. So how long does it take to fix it? Let's say 30 minutes. How long? How what will the lab cost plus labor cost be? Well, by the time you have your lab and pay for assistance, 230. What will the labor and materials cost? You know. Actual cost to you, $400 in loss production for the 30 minutes, plus 330 materials, lab and labor, equals $730 actual cost to you. But let's remember, you've got to go ahead and take care of the rest of your overhead. And let's assume that overhead an additional 50%. And actually, uh, I put that down, this actually should be 35%. And that's another $255. And you will have to produce an additional $985 to hit break even. Well, that's amazing because you probably didn't even charge 985 to do the darn veneer to start with. So basically, one remake of a single veneer, basically you lose the entire cost of that veneer. It's basically lost. Let's look at what about a three-unit bridge? And on this one, you'll notice that uh, I do have down here the 35%, uh, and I didn't do that on the previous slide, so make a note of that. But let's remake a three-unit bridge. Total production per hour of the doctor is still 800 an hour. How long does it take to fix? Let's say it takes an hour. Uh, 
what will the lab cost plus labor cost? $630. What will labor and materials cost? 200 These are just estimates. I mean, each one of you are going to have different amounts of time that you spend, different things that, uh, you know, different laboratories that you use. But 800 in the loss production plus $830 materials, lab, and labor, 1630 plus an additional $630 uh, for overhead, and you're going to have to produce an additional $2,260 to hit break even. Um, you can see the value of this tool. I mean, I, I don't even know what the, I mean, I think the cost is maybe seven, eight thousand dollars for the, for the, uh, for the tech scan. But in determining what's the most important thing about the T-scan, to me it is keeping me from having to remake and redo dentistry, especially, I mean, it could be a single crown. Uh, with the all ceramics that we're doing today, uh, I've done a lot of Procera. I've also done a lot of lava crowns. I do a lot of, uh, you know, Empress. But when one of those, you know, fractures, and it does happen, uh, it just costs us money. It happens so much less now because we're checking all of our cases. And many times we'll have the patients checked when they come in for their recare visits. So every time that patient comes in for recare, we're checking that. What are some of the other things we're checking? We're making sure that that patient's wearing their occlusal guard. So if that patient's a high functional risk patient, they've got to be wearing that occlusal guard. If they're not wearing it, then I don't care. You know, if, if they say, no, I'm not wearing it, I can't wear it, our statement in hygiene becomes very crystal clear. Well, Bob, you know, if you're not wearing the occlusal guard, remember we talked about you being a high functional risk, meaning your bite's very, very strong? This work's not going to last, and if it breaks, you're going to end up having to pay for it again. So my suggestion is I sure would wear it. Oh, I know, Doc, you know, I know I need to get in there and wear it, but I just haven't been, you know, it just doesn't feel right or, you know, I just can't get used to it. And I said, well, you know, you'll you'll get used to it after you, uh, you know, pay an additional three or $4,000 for a bridge that breaks again because we've been real crystal clear talking about it. And they'll go, yeah, I know, I know. And I kind of make light of it, but I, I make light, but I'm definitely in relationship with the patient. And what a relationship is, it's an agreed upon course of action between two parties. We document, document, document. So we're going to write down in that chart, Dr. Baird talked to him. Hey, he acknowledged, Bob acknowledged that he's not wearing his night guard and that Dr. Baird said that if you, if you don't, you know, if you're not wearing your night guard, you're going to have to pay for this. Because too often we're, we're remaking these things and we're remaking it, uh, at, at our cost. And so the combination of, using risk factors and making sure patients are following through with those risk factors, and then using the T-scan. And I think it's probably one of the more valuable tools I have in my office, and certainly for the cost, uh, you know, probably a six-unit bridge, I can, I can have that technology available. Plus, you can pretty well tell your patient, you know what, there's not a lot of dentists around that are using this technology, but let me show it to you. And that's what I call marketing at the chair. Uh, I would much rather market at the chair. We, we do a lot of external marketing in our practice, but my favorite is to market right at the chair. I market CERAC technology right at the chair. We market our T-scan. We market our uh, ICAT machine. We market digital x-rays. Everything we have that is technology-driven, I'm showing the patient saying, look at this, isn't this cool? And that is all a part of this marketing, uh, you know, when you have the patient right there. So that's something that we've really look at. But that's how we figure, you know, the return on investment uh, when I'm looking at this because we get that question at PDA at the Productive Dentist Academy all the time. How do I, how do I justify it? Well, just look at what you're redoing and uh, figure out the cost to do that. Figure out what your productivity per hour is, how long it's going to take you to fix it, uh, what the lab cost and labor and what your materials are, and then just sit down and figure it out. The reason we put down an additional 35% overhead is because we've already taken care of labor, which is usually running around 20%. We're taking care of the lab cost, and we're taking care of our materials cost, so our supply cost. So these are pretty much fixed expenses, the cost of your building and, and those types of things. So that's what's going to be important.